I know you have been chomping at the bit to get some more retreat information. I know a lot of you guys are really excited about it. Um, so I have an update for you. A couple of weeks ago, we announced that we are going to Silver Birch with First Free, and we've had a little bit of change of plans. Unfortunately, First Free is not gonna be able to be going up there, um, so we're kind of changing things up a little bit. We are going back to Lake Geneva Youth Camp, and guys, we are so pumped about it. Um, so I can't wait. I know so many of you guys love Lake Geneva. It is like the best place ever. I know going back is like super nostalgic and exciting. Um, we are believing for lots of snow so we can go sledding and play bird ball and all the things while we at Lake Geneva. So here's what you need to know. Registration will be starting to open next week. Um, the dates are February 5th through the 7th. It's from Friday through Sunday morning. Um, we will take a bus up there and um, cost will, we're still figuring out all the numbers, but it will be about 170, um, maybe a little bit lower cross your fingers. Um, so we're working on that and we'll get all that info to you next week at Delta. Um, so make sure you are here so you can get all that info. And um, guys, I'm, I can't wait. Like it's going to be amazing. Cannot wait for the retreat. Um, if you have any questions, let us know. We're going to be talking through um, just like COVID stuff and what that looks like. Um, but guys, it's going to be awesome. So can't wait for you to join us. Retreat's coming in like just a couple months. Insane. Oh, I can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. All right. So save the date.
surrender. This is my surrender. There is where I lay it down. You are all I'm chasing now. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Hey guys, how are we doing? Hope you are having a good night in group. Um, I just want to say, I know I say this a lot, but I miss you guys. Um, you know, I was thinking this week, we, we uh, opened church up again this past Sunday, and it just occurred to me, like, I really miss gathering all together with you guys. I know you guys do too. I know that there's just something different about sitting around a living room, which I actually, I think it's kind of cool. Like, I, I love it. I love the vibe and being able to just, like, hang out and um, talk honestly. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like when I'm sitting in a living room, like, I can just be way more open, like, with you guys or with my friends than when I'm sitting, like, in another building. Um... But I was thinking about that. Even though we haven't been able to be together, I am so proud of you guys for continuing to prioritize this, being here on Sunday nights. Um, I was thinking about this, like, why do we do it? <laughs> you know, like, why in the middle of your schoolwork, in the middle of life, um, in the middle of, like, people telling you you should, you should stay home right now, why are you continuing to prioritize this, guys? Here's the deal. Like, we need Jesus. Like, I don't know about you guys, but there are times um, right now in this season where it's like, I just need to remember what's really important here, right? Like, I need a little bit more Jesus in my life. Like, I need some hope. I need some peace. I need some joy. And uh, I just want to give you guys props for continuing to prioritize this time on Sunday night because coming together is a reminder to me every single week when we're together, when I get to hang out with you guys, that this is about Jesus, that he's doing some stuff that even though like I might feel isolated or lonely or depleted or maybe things are great, um, either way, I need a reminder of how good he is and that I need him. And not only that, but guys, we need each other like super badly. I know some of you guys are feeling isolated. Like I was even talking with some of you guys the other day about the fact that like you have to eat lunch like far apart. So weird, right? Um, so we need each other. Like we just do. And um, so I'm just really, really proud of you guys for continuing to make this time on Sunday nights a priority. And I want to continue to challenge you to do that. Continue to press into your relationship with Jesus. Guys, he is it. Like he is the thing that we are all so craving so badly. Like, are you craving something? Like I'm, I'm totally like craving some life right now. Like I want more than what we've got. And I totally feel limited all the time. And Jesus is the one who wants to offer that to you and to me and to all of us. And so keep pressing in guys. I'm proud of you. Um, this season is not going to be a forever season. We're going to continue to move forward. and But even in the midst of it, just like we talked about last week, there is hope and Jesus has got us. And so um, we're going to continue to do this and just to be together and to pursue Jesus together, right? Love it. High five. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in light of that, um, we're going to take a couple of weeks and we're going to talk about how Jesus sees it. If we're going to follow Jesus, then figured we better talk about like, well, how does Jesus see things? How does Jesus see the world? How does Jesus see us? Um, so some of you guys kind of gave us some ideas for that. We're going to talk about it in groups the next couple of weeks. Sherman and I and maybe Kyle are going to put together um, like some things to post on social media about some other things that Jesus says and how he sees it on certain things. Um, but tonight, uh, I wanted to share with you guys um, a passage from Luke 11. And I read this uh, a little while ago, and um, it got me thinking about what in the world does Jesus think about our behavior? Like, what does he think about our actions? 
and what we do. And, and here's why I was thinking that, because here's the deal. Like there are so many people who think that Christianity is just about following a bunch of rules, right? About behaving the right way. Anybody, I mean, like, do you ever feel like you're fighting that? Like, I don't know. I feel like there are times where I'm talking with people and they're like, oh, well, you just do all of those different things and you just want to control and God just wants to control you. And, and it's like that kind of mindset, right? And so I got me thinking, like, what does Jesus actually think about what we do in our behavior? And so in this passage in Luke 11, um, Jesus is sitting down for dinner, actually, um, with some Pharisees, with some people who... Um, well, let me tell you a little bit about Pharisees. Here's what you need to know about Pharisees. Um, Pharisees were religious leaders. Not only were they religious leaders, um, but they were like really, really, really good. <laughs> they were really good. Like they knew scripture. Like they knew this better than anybody else. And not only did they know, better, know it better than anybody else, but they like, if people had questions about it, that's who they went to. Um, like they were, they were respected and they were sought after, um, especially when it comes to things of faith. Uh, so these were like good dudes, but here's what's really, really kind of wild about this. These same people were the same ones that Jesus had the most beef with. Anytime Jesus got ticked in scripture, it was basically with these guys. And so I want to look at that a little bit tonight because there's a little bit in there about what does that mean for us? Like if these were people who were doing everything right, like, and it doesn't Jesus want us to do every, do the right things. Like, so what's the deal with this? Like, why would Jesus have all kinds of beef with people who are doing all the right things? Well, I want to read you this passage, like I said, from Luke 11, and we are going to start in verse 37. So get your Bibles. Guys, remember, bring your Bibles to group. We're going to read these things because these things change us. Side note, when was the last time you opened this up and it spoke to you? You know that this, that this word right here can actually speak to you. It says that, that the, the word of God can get like deep inside of our hearts that it actually like cuts in between the bone and the marrow and like all the, and the joints and like basically it gets in us. It can like change who we are. And so read your Bible. There's some good stuff in it. God wants to speak to you through it. So, all right, here we go. So Luke chapter 11, verse 37. As Jesus was speaking, one of the Pharisees invited him home for a meal. So come on over, Jesus, come have dinner with us, right? So he went in and he took his place at the table. His host was amazed to see that he sat down to eat without first performing the ceremonial washing required by Jewish custom. So Jesus didn't do the thing that he was supposed to do, right? Then the Lord said to him, you Pharisees are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you're filthy. You're full of greed and you're full of wickedness. You fools, didn't God make the inside as well as the outside? So give to the needy what you greedily possess and you will be clean all over. But how terrible it will be for you Pharisees, for you're careful to tithe even the tiniest part of your income, but you completely forget about justice and the love of God. You should tithe, yes, but you should not leave undone the more important things. How terrible it will be for you Pharisees, for how you love the seats of honor in the synagogues and the respectful greetings from everyone as you walk through the markets. Yes, how terrible it will be for you, for you are like hidden graves in a field. People walk over them without knowing the corruption that they're stepping on. Man, honestly, I read that and it just kind of blows my mind a little bit. Like the Pharisees get a bad rep in the Bible. Like anytime you hear a pastor or somebody talking about Pharisees, it's like, oh, those guys, we don't want to be those guys. But there's some times where if I'm honest, like I can kind of relate to these guys. Like they probably didn't start out as bad dudes. Like they were probably had good intentions, right? Like they wanted to know scripture. They wanted to do the right thing. But Jesus calls them on it. And he says, you know what? All of that stuff you're doing, it is for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. See, the Pharisees, they were all about presentation and performance. And they were pretending in everything. And Jesus saw right through it completely. Like, they were all about looking right on the outside, but not the inside. And so when it comes to our behavior, this is what is so fascinating to me. It's like Jesus is way more concerned 
about what's happening on the inside of us than what's happening on the outside of us. Like I said, any time he had beef, it was with these guys, and these guys were doing the right things. At least they seemed to be. But Jesus knew that that wasn't necessarily the case. He was looking at their inside, at their heart, and he was going, you say all the right things, but you don't actually love people in your heart. You're following all the rules and maybe making the right decisions, but you're neglecting the things that are really important, like compassion and justice and caring for the people around you. So how in the world does that line up with who I created you to be? Now, here's the thing, though. Like, does that mean that Jesus thinks that our behavior doesn't matter? <laughs> well, no, that's not the case. Not at all, because Jesus does care about how we act and how we treat other people, but he's looking first at these guys and he's going, what's your motivation? Before you do anything on the outside, where's your heart? What is the state of your character? Jesus is about character cultivation. You know, I think about, about these Pharisees and you know, if, if we are going to move away from some being like them, you know, like these people who were probably hypocritical where their behavior didn't line up with what their heart was, what was going on in their heart. If we're going to be different than that, we've got to focus on the inside first, not the outside. And that's so backwards from what we do. Right. I mean, come on, like how many of us spend so much time focusing on the outside and what people see, right? Okay, so sometimes that's this, like the actual physical appearance. Ladies, focusing on her face. Dudes, focusing on how you like on your body, like all the things, right? Like we focus a lot about how we look physically, but it's not just that. We focus so much on performing and measuring up. We do all these different things. We create social media profiles and like, man, like the amount of time that we spend crafting and creating and all of this stuff for this outside stuff. And Jesus is going, okay, that's all fine and good, but what about the inside? What about the inside? Because that's what really matters. When we focus on the inside rather than the outside, Jesus wants to do something really incredible in us. And there's a few things that happen when we choose to focus on the inside rather than the outside. And the first one is this. When we focus on the inside, we get to let go of the pressure. Guys, let me ask you something. Where in your life do you feel pressure? Pressure to perform, pressure to pretend, pressure to be perfect. You feel pressure in any of those areas? You know, with these Pharisees, they might not have had the right motivation. But it's interesting, like, because Jesus calls them, right? He says they're greedy. He says they are not worried about other people. At their in their heart but here's the thing like if a Pharisee were to admit that he was wrong about something like everyone would be all over them right like they would have their whole persona and their whole image built up and then it's like wait a minute no 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 if you screwed up like they're gonna get so much flack for that and I'll be honest like there's some times where I think we feel like that and we feel this massive amount of pressure we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to create the right image, to craft it, to make the outside look as good as we hope we are. You know, the thing about perfectionism, guys, like it really isn't about being perfect. Everything about perfectionism is about impressing somebody else. That's all it is. So who are you trying to impress? If that's something that you wrestle with, maybe it's not perfectionism, but like I said, where are you feeling pressure in your life? When we focus on the inside, when we allow Jesus to do some work on the inside of our hearts, we can let go of the pressure of what everybody else sees on the outside. Because guys, what happens on the outside, when you let Jesus in, you are not defined by what happens on the outside. And there is somebody in that living room right now who needs to remember that. 
that all the stuff that you spend so much time running around and managing on the outside, if you let Jesus into the inside and clean up this stuff, all the outside stuff doesn't have to define your worth and your value anymore because Jesus is speaking to your heart and says you're enough. I love you. I stink and died for you so that you don't have to run around and manage all that. It's not about all of that stuff on the outside. Let me work on the inside. Let's let go of the pressure of all of that outside stuff. If you would just be willing to let me in, to focus on making me pleased with you, not everybody else, not what everybody else is thinking, then I can change it all for you. We can let go of the pressure. One other thing with this, when we focus on the inside rather than the outside, we actually get to become perfect. You're probably like, wait, what? Like, what do you mean perfect? Like, I thought this wasn't about perfection. I thought this wasn't about behavior. Like, what are you talking about, Angie? Okay, so Jesus, in Matthew 5, he's sitting down with a whole bunch of people. He gives the most amazing sermon ever. And he looks at them, and this is what he says. He goes, you must be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. It's like, well, wait a minute. Time out, Jesus. Like, I can't do that. I can't do that. Like, I can't be perfect. Like, we just talked about this. Like, this whole thing is about image management, right? Like, and I can't, I can't do that. Like, that's a lot of pressure, and I thought we were letting go of pressure. So what's the deal? Well, if you look at that word perfect as it was originally written, it doesn't mean just perfection. Like, outside, like, behave perfectly, like, do all the right things. Like, that's not what it says. What that word actually means is complete. It means whole. It means the finished product all put together, all done. So what Jesus is saying is you must be perfect as my father is already perfect. He's not saying poof, you need to change it all, get it all together people. What he's saying is you need to become like my father in heaven. That the end goal is about becoming, that our inside would be about becoming more like our heavenly father. It's not about behavior modification. But guess what? Like, stuff on the outside does change. Like, we act different when our insides change. But it's not about fixing all the behaviors on the outside. It's about saying, Jesus, come in, transform, change my heart, make me more like our Heavenly Father so that I can let go of this pressure and I can live to glorify you with everything that I have. That's what he asks us of, asks for us to do. That's what we get to do. That's the life that we get to step into. Pressure free. Just allowing God to change and transform us. Let me ask you this. You've had a lot of time to yourself over COVID, right? Does your inside look more like Jesus than it did at the beginning of COVID? Ugh. I don't know. I don't even know if I could answer that honestly for me. Does it look more like Jesus? Here's the deal. What if in this next season, over this next couple of months, what if you did some heart work? Not hard work, don't try harder, but what if you spent a little bit of time focusing more on the inside than everything going on around the outside? And say, Jesus, come and transform my heart. Would the people that are closest to you see something different? Like, man, what would happen if you said, Jesus, come and change my character. Come and change the way that I see people. How would your family be impacted? Like, you're spending a whole lot of time at home right now, right? So, like, does your family know that your heart is being transformed to becoming more like Jesus? You don't have to try harder. It's not about working harder or behaving better. It's about saying, Jesus, come and change my inside. I don't want to be like a Pharisee who just acts right on the outside, but doesn't do anything different on the inside. And so that's my challenge to you guys, that in this next week, in this next season, to say, Jesus, work on the inside. Take some time. Do some character building, character development. Build that stuff, not the outside. And man, like things are going to look so different if we would just allow God to transform and change our inside. Let me pray for you guys. 
Heavenly Father, I want to look like you. I want to look like you. Jesus, if I'm honest, there are so many times where I feel so much pressure to perform, to look perfect on the outside, to do a whole lot of image management, God, and I know that there are students who are feeling the same weight of that. So God, I pray that tonight that you would help us let go of that pressure and that Jesus, that you would help to transform and change our inside. In Jesus' name, amen. We will see you guys next week. You'll be hearing from Charmon. He's the best. Have a great conversation tonight. And uh, we'll be having retreat registration here real soon. So make sure you're talking about that too. Talk with your parents. Say the date, February 5th through the 7th. And we will see you then. Bye.